Redfin just reported that home prices in the United States have hit a new record high as a result of low spring inventory. But Florida, on the other hand, is seeing a massive surge of inventory. Year-over-year -year inventory growth is higher in Florida than any other state. In addition, Florida is ranking first for the most listings with price cuts according to data from Reventure app. And this is making everyone nervous because in the past, Florida has been a bellwether for the U.S. housing market. Simply put, during the housing crisis, crisis of 2008, it was states like Florida, California, Arizona, and Nevada that were hit the hardest and where the crash started. These were also the states that saw the greatest home value appreciations before the crash, especially in cities like Miami, West Palm Beach, Las Vegas, and Phoenix. So what does this potential Florida housing market crash mean for the rest of the United States? We're going to be taking a look at the data as well as a handful of listings from across the state of Florida to get a better idea idea of what's going on here. Let's start off by talking about what happened during the previous housing market bubble because it's eerily similar to what has happened over the last few years. We're going to be taking a look at a research project compiled by a group of experts at Duke University. The very first thing this report mentions is that the Florida housing market bubble was quite pronounced likely as a result of investors buying second homes in the state. In 2021, we saw the exact same thing play out. Tons of affluent out-of-state buyers bought homes in the state to get out of their locked down states. In addition, a lot of business owners received massive PPP loans that were entirely forgivable, also known as free money. While that money was supposed to be used for payroll expenses, it's entirely possible that a lot of that money went into purchasing real estate, especially in the state of Florida. Now, according to this report, prior to the year 2000, home prices were relatively stable in the state, but from 2000 to 2000, 2007, home prices increased by 96%. And this rate of appreciation far exceeded most other states. If you take a look at this chart, you can see just how pronounced this was. If you compare this to today and what has happened over the last five years, the average Florida home value has gone from 241,586 to just under 400,000, an increase of 65.5%. But keep in mind, this bubble-like appreciation and subsequent crash was most pronounced in cities like Miami and West Palm Beach. Looking at Miami, over the last five years, the average home value has increased by 66.7%, which is pretty much in line with the state average. But as far as West Palm Beach goes, we've seen the average home value climb from about 230,000 to 403,000, an increase of 75.4%. We're seeing some of the same cities having that bubble-like appreciation that we did from 2000 to 2007. And when you see abnormal real estate appreciation like this, you end up having tons of flippers enter the market as they see everyone else around them making easy money. This can initially lead to accelerated rates of appreciation because these investors are competing with potential homeowners looking to buy in the area. If we revisit that research report, we can take a look at this chart that shows the number of investor property loans as a percentage of all loans. You can see how it was gradually increasing but then it accelerated quite a bit from 2003 to 2005, likely because the word got out about the easy money to be made in the housing market at the time. What's interesting to see as well here is the blue line below Florida, which also saw a huge uptick in investor property loans, is Arizona, which was among the four states hit the hardest in the 08 crash. And if we take a look at a city like Phoenix, Arizona, this time around, we're seeing the same thing happening again. Investors piled in in, accounting for 32% or nearly a third of all home sales in quarter three of 2021. It's no coincidence that the states with a lot of investor buying activity saw the greatest price declines after the bubble burst. However, I do want to point out that another key finding of this report is that loan delinquency rates and foreclosure rates soared during the onset of the housing market collapse. If we take a look at mortgages that are 30 to 89 days delinquent today, we can see that there has been a slight uptick, but Florida is still on par with the national average at 1.4%. Keep in mind though, this is more of a lagging indicator. Most homeowners still have a lot of equity in their homes if they bought a few years ago, and most of them have the option to sell and cash out if they can't afford their mortgage payments, which could be part of the reason why we're seeing such an uptick of inventory in Florida. But one concerning statistic I did find here is the credit card delinquency rates by state. Florida 
ranks second on that list, indicating that people might not be well off financially. Looking at the big picture here, there are clear similarities between the 2000 to 2007 housing market bubble and what we've seen happen today. However, the collapse of the US housing market in 2008 had a lot to do with the subprime mortgage crisis. Simply put, home loans were made available to borrowers with low credit scores and a high risk of default. Many of these were adjustable rate mortgages that would start off with a lower monthly payment, but it would increase at a later date. Subprime mortgages are not a characteristic that we're seeing in today's housing market because regulations have been put in place to make sure that that type of thing doesn't happen again. But that does not mean that prices aren't crashing, especially in specific Florida markets that we're going to be taking a look at shortly. Now, before we get into these specific markets and individual listings, I want to point out what was mentioned in this FDIC report titled Anatomy of a Perfect Housing Market Storm. And real quick, if you've enjoyed this video so far, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and hit the bell. That way you'll be notified of my future ones. According to this report, from 2004 to 2007, Arizona and Nevada ranked as the two fastest growing states in the nation, followed closely by Florida, which ranked ninth. This influx of new people led to significant housing market imbalances in these states, which can be seen best by looking at the relationship between home prices and local incomes. In the years leading up to the housing market crash, home price growth far exceeded the growth of income, which meant that the local population could not afford these new prices. This report points out that a family earning a median income in Nevada in 2003 could afford a home that was priced approximately 20% of above the median house price in the state using traditional mortgage financing. However, by late 2005, home prices had risen so much that a family earning the median income could only afford a home priced at 24% below the state's median price. This affordability problem normally results in limited demand for housing as fewer households have high enough income to purchase a home. But that's when the adjustable rate mortgages became the go-to product in the mid-2000s because people got suckered in to the lower monthly payment, not understanding that it would go up over time. Here's the big problem with Florida. It currently ranks 36th in the United States for median household income. This makes housing largely unaffordable for the majority of people living in the state. Instead, it's mostly those who are moving to the state from another state or purchasing a second or third home or an investment property that are able to afford these prices. And this leads us to another big problem that Florida is facing and that is a new trend emerging of people leaving the Sunshine State. Now, it's important to understand that you still have a lot more people moving to the state of Florida than you have moving out of the state at this point in time. For example, this article here mentions that while 1 million people moved to the Sunshine State in 2022, nearly 500,000 moved out of the state with many moving to Georgia, Texas, and North Carolina. Another interesting point here is two other major destinations for those moving out of the state of Florida were both California and New York, which were two states that saw a massive outflow of residents moving to Florida during the pandemic. The problem I'm seeing here is that the lack of affordability for homes for local Floridians means that you need a constant influx of new people moving to the state to support real estate prices. It's likely that we'll continue seeing people moving to the state of Florida in droves. But if the trend of people leaving the state grows, that could become a problem. Problem. And their reasons for leaving Florida are very legitimate. Florida has some big problems right now that there aren't very clear answers to. So why are people leaving Florida? The first reason is because insurance rates are skyrocketing in the state. For example, this article here mentions that two of the state's private insurance companies have just applied to increase insurance premiums by over 50%. In addition, this is expected to be happening across the board among most, if not all, insurance carriers in the state. And a lot of this is being attributed to extreme weather events in the state of Florida. It's not just hurricanes anymore. Florida is seeing other weather events like extreme flooding, tornadoes, and even hailstorms. In fact, many in the state are insured by citizens' property insurance. And this is a last-ditch not-for-profit insurance carrier for those who cannot find a policy through the private market. But it's not just homeowners insurance. Florida has the third highest highest auto insurance rate in the entire country. According to Insurify, auto insurance rates jumped 24% for Floridians in 2023 and are expected to go 
up another 7% this year. If you've spent any amount of time driving on I-95 in the state of Florida, this should come as no surprise to you. Numerous studies have found that some of the most dangerous roads in the entire country are in the state of Florida. But aside from just homeowners insurance and auto insurance, other costs are going up too, including property taxes. With the huge increase in home prices across the state, appraisers are having a field day with assessments and corresponding tax bills climbing. And then of course there is inflation. With this massive influx of people moving to the state, Florida is now at the top of the list for the highest inflation rate in the entire country, coming in at 3.9% over the last 12 months. Between all of these different factors, Florida is no longer this affordable getaway for retirees, many of which being on a fixed income. And with the much better bang for your buck that you can get in states like North and South Carolina, a lot of people are just up and leaving. The last thing I want to touch on before getting into the data and the individual listings is the hurricane factor. A few months back, I visited Port Charlotte, Florida, which is an area that was ravaged by Hurricane Ian, and many of these houses were still badly damaged from the hurricane. That hurricane had a detrimental effect on the local housing market, with many listings seeing aggressive price cuts and even some in short sale situations. Well, here's the bad news. The NOAA just issued their highest ever hurricane season forecast, expecting the coming months to be exceptionally busy with storms and hurricanes. As a result of record high Atlantic Ocean temperatures and a strong chance of La Nina conditions, forecasters said that there is an 85% chance of an above normal hurricane season. Overall, Florida seems to be in a delicate balance and a continued influx of new people is needed to support housing prices. But the writing is definitely on the wall across many markets in the state. Let's dive into some of that data now, and then we're going to take a look at some listings that have seen some massive price cuts. We're going to be taking a look at some housing market data using the Reventure app, which is a tool that I highly recommend when it comes to researching housing markets. The first metric I want to take a look at here is the sale inventory growth year over year, which is going to show us what states are having the biggest growth of inventory. Based on the color scheme here, the darker the red, that means there's going to be more inventory growth in that state year over year. And the very few blue spots on this map indicate that the inventory is actually less than it was a year prior. So for example, looking at most of the Sun Belt, we can see that inventory is growing quite a bit in those states. But as mentioned before, Florida is leading the pack with 64.2% year over year sale inventory growth. If we take a look specifically here at the state of Florida, Florida, what I want to look at in particular here is the total inventory in the state or the for sale inventory. And this paints a very interesting picture here of what played out in the housing market. You can see before the pandemic, we had normal levels of inventory, and then all of that inventory was pretty much sucked out of the housing market, bringing us to a low here in 2022 of about 38,000 listings. So the inventory in the state of Florida has grown by 255% from the bottom in 2000. 2022, which is a substantial increase. The next data point I want to take a look at here is going to be related to the migration total. And this is showing us the number of people moving into the state after you subtract those who moved out of the state. And what we can see here is back before the previous housing market crash, there was definitely an acceleration of people moving to the state. And it peaked out in the year 2005 with 356,000 more people moving in than those who moved out. However, after the crash, we saw a significant decline of those moving to the state, where it bottomed out in 2009 at just 34,000. What we saw play out again here is a run-up of people moving to the state, and we saw an all-time high in 2022 with 444,000 or so people moving to the state of Florida, followed by about 372,000 in 2023. So you still have a lot more people moving to the state, but it is interesting to see how that same scenario played out in the prior housing market bubble. Another interesting data point to look at here is the number of building permits, which is going to show you home building activity in the particular state. So as you can see, during the prior housing market bubble, there was a significant ramp up in building permits where it peaked out in February of 2006, and then there was a sharp decline, obviously because the prices crashed. We've definitely seen an uptick here in the number of building permits, 
permits, but nothing like we saw during the prior housing market bubble. And it did peak out here in February of 2022 with 214,000 or so building permits, and it has declined slightly thereafter each year. Now, it mentions here that it can take anywhere from six to 24 months for these permits to turn into completed units. So a lot of these permits that showed up in 2023 and 2024 are going to be turning into inventory that comes online in either 2024 or later in 2025. So it is going to be competing with the current listings on the market. And if we zoom in here on the state of Florida and take a look at the sale inventory growth year over year on a metro level, this is going to show us the areas of Florida where the inventory is growing the most year over year. Now, for the most part, you're seeing an increase in the inventory levels across the entire state, but it's definitely the West Coast in particular that is seeing some of the highest levels of inventory growth. Punta Gorda is coming in first position here for the area that has seen the most growth of inventory year over year at an increase of 107.8%. So that's going to be the first area that we're going to look at in terms of listings. That is followed by Cape Coral, which is just below it. And that's in the Fort Myers area, which is right where Hurricane Ian hit, which is definitely not coincidental. Cape Coral has seen sale inventory growth of 87.4% year over year. The area with the third highest highest growth of inventory year over year is none other than Naples, which is again just below Cape Coral, and the inventory there is up 82.6% year over year. And finally, fourth on our list here for the most inventory growth in the state is going to be Northport, which is in the same area here. It's all along the west coast of Florida, and this has growth of 81.1% year over year. So these four areas of Florida are where you're seeing the most growth of inventory and where we should be seeing the most aggressive price cuts. So now we're gonna jump into some actual listings and see what's going on in these local housing markets. For these listings, we're going to be looking at the recently sold houses as this shows us exactly what people are paying for houses right now in these markets. The first Punta Gorda listing is a very large home situated right on the water in a boating community with direct access to the Gulf of Mexico. During the peak of the bubble, this probably could have sold for a million dollars or close to it, but just wait until you see the price that it actually sold for. Overall, this is a pretty solid listing. Not only does this have a pool, but it also has a yard, which is very well maintained. You also have a lift ready to go for your boat and a dock, in addition to this fenced in area, which would be ideal for pets. As far as the interior of the house goes, it is a little bit dated inside, but it's still a very nice home with a pretty open layout. Looking through the photos, there are multiple different types of flooring or at least colors throughout. That's definitely something I'm not personally a huge fan of. The pool area is very nice and you have multiple access points to it from across the home. You also have these hurricane shutters that have been installed at the pool area, which is definitely a plus because as we know, this area is prone to hurricanes. If you take a look at the pricing activity, it sold in March of 2022 for 805000 and it then went back on the market in February of 2024 at a list price of 899000 The seller was likely looking to get out at a break even after the closing costs paid and commissions on the sell side, but it didn't happen. After pulling the listing and relisting at a new price of 875000 in April, there was a $50,000 price cut to 825000 in May. A lot of people get nervous in Florida in May because hurricane season begins on June 1st. This house just sold on May 22nd for a price of $755,000 or 16% below the original list price of $899,000. This means the house sold for $50,000 cheaper than it did in 2022 and when you include the transaction costs the seller probably lost about a hundred grand. Now at 16% below the list price this isn't exactly a a price crash, but the listings we're looking at shortly have had massive crash-like price cuts. The next listing in the Punta Gorda area is this absolutely massive five-bed, four-and-a-half bathroom, 3,600 square foot house. This would most likely be for a multi-generational household or a gigantic family, and overall inside it is pretty dated, and the very low ceiling is apparent when you first enter the home. As far as the kitchen goes, it is definitely on the smaller side. Now, look Looking through the list,
listing photos, one thing that I noticed is that one of the bathrooms here has a glass door out to the yard without any privacy glass. That is definitely a weird quirk here, especially for a house that doesn't have a pool. All of the bedrooms and the bathrooms appear to be very similar. Nothing has really been updated here, and it seems like this house is part of an HOA. This can definitely be a deterrent for buyers, as this becomes an additional monthly fee that you have to pay on top of the mortgage. If we take a look at the real estimate or the estimated home value, back in 2022, at the peak of the bubble, it was showing an estimated value as high as 742000 More than likely, it was never worth anything close to that, but it's still an interesting reference point nonetheless. Taking a look at the price activity, it was listed for sale in August of 2022 at the sky-high price of $750,000. Not surprisingly, it didn't sell, and they cut the price four times over the next few months to as low as $485,000 before putting it back to $585,000 and then removing the listing altogether. They relisted in February of 2023 at $585,000, and over the next four and a half months, they cut the price four more times to $400,000. 10,000 at the end of June 2023. Finally, in January of this year, the house sold for $400,000. And while that is 47% less than the original list price, this had a lot to do with it being ridiculously overpriced. This listing is definitely an interesting example of the price abnormalities that cropped up in the Florida housing market. Up next, we have our first listing in Cape Coral, and the price that this one sold at is absolutely mind-blowing. Now, the house is a little bit on the smaller side at around 1400 square feet, but it's still a three bed, two bath, making it a popular size that people are looking for. The landscaping is nicely done and the white painted brick does give it a more modern look. So the curb appeal is really not too bad here. You do have high ceilings in the house, which is definitely a plus. However, this half wall in the living room is something that a lot of people would not be a fan of and they would probably want to get rid of it altogether. Overall, this is a nice little starter house for somebody the kitchen is nothing really to speak of here, but it would definitely work for just getting into your first house. And I will say that it is staged pretty nicely with all of this furniture. Now in the listing description, it mentions that the buyer financing fell through, but the house appraised and had a good inspection. This was definitely a panic sale because they even mentioned offering 15,000 towards the buyer's closing costs. Looking at the price estimate calculated, it was showing around 330,000 based on the area. They ended up listing the house for just over 339000 which is in line with the estimate. However, they cut the price over the next three months down to 314000 but the final sale price on May 23rd was just 250000 And of course, don't forget about the credit of 15000 towards the closing. This was definitely someone who was desperate to sell. The house ended up selling for 26.5% below the list price, which is definitely a crash-like price cut. However, this likely had a lot to do with the panic selling, and if they were able to ride it out, there was probably a better price to be had. But at the same time, inventory is surging in this area, and keep in mind, if enough people panic sell at rock bottom prices, this can have a domino effect in the market. Our next listing in Cape Coral is this prime three bedroom, three and a half bathroom house located right on the canal. Looking at the listing photos, most would think this is a $1 million plus listing. The landscaping is very nicely done with a grand entryway and you have an enclosed pool as well as hardscaping and a deck with a dock to your boat. As far as the interior of the home goes, it is a little bit dated, but it's still a very impressive layout with a lot of nice touch. This house was definitely top of the line when it was built back in 2003. Now, as far as the bathrooms go, these are definitely showing their age here with this old tile, but this would be a great property for somebody who had a remodel budget who could really modernize things. Now, looking at the listing description, of course, the first thing that you notice is the motivated seller written in all caps. This definitely looks like another panic sale. And it also says here that the boat conveys with the property. I believe what they're saying here is that the boat comes with the property so this came with the boat if we take a look here at the estimated value at one point here towards the end of 2023 it was showing an estimated 
value coming in at $1.2 million. But the price history, on the other hand, tells a different story. The property was listed in October of 2023 at $1.25 million, which doesn't seem crazy for a house on a canal. A month later, though, the price was cut to $1.195 million, followed by a price cut at the end of this January to just $995,000, to be right under the $1 million mark. There was another price cut in February to $975,000, but get this, the house ended up selling in March for just $835,000. Coming down from a list price of 1.25 million, that is a drop of 33.2%. Moral of the story here is it's taking aggressive crash-like price cuts to sell a property in many markets across the state of Florida. Up next, we're taking a look at our first Naples listing, which is an area with the third highest inventory growth in Florida year over year. This listing is for a three bedroom, two bathroom, 1500 square foot townhouse. It is in an HOA, which may have worked against it, but it does come with the benefit of maintenance free living. Taking a look at the listing photos, there isn't much to speak of. The paint colors are definitely dated, but that could be changed easily enough. As far as the kitchen goes, it was definitely upgraded and it does have this nice countertop bar eating area. And as far as this on the wall here, it really confused me. I couldn't tell if this is some type of stone or if this is just a very large painting. The bathrooms seem to have updated sinks, countertops, and faucets. Those definitely don't look original. So overall, this is a pretty nice little townhouse. It really only needs some new paint colors and possibly swapping out a few of these dated fans and light fixtures. If we take a look at the listing description, the obvious details detail is the all caps price drastically reduced highly motivated seller again this definitely smells like another panic sale according to the real estimate here at the end of 2023 this was supposedly worth 400 to 470 thousand but just wait until you see what this actually sold for after listing at 479 thousand this March the price was cut by 20 grand about two weeks later and then the very next day they cut the price by another ten thousand dollars which is really strange. One month and three more price cuts later, we end up at 399,000 towards the end of April. But I think this price is going to shock everyone watching. This ended up selling on May 23rd for just $250,000. That's a price drop of 47.8% from the original list price of 479,000. And the remarkable thing is, all of those price cuts happened over the course of just two and a half months. When you have panic sellers like this in the market, this can become a big problem for others trying to sell similar homes in the area as it affects the comps. But clearly people are desperate to get out and if this trend continues, panic could set in across the board. Our next listing in Naples is this mega 5,000 square foot, five bed, four bath estate. It has a two car garage as well as a massive two plus acre lot that seems to be very well maintained. As far as the interior goes, this house is very very modern with some beautiful finish work. The paint colors might be a little dated, but this would be considered move-in ready for most people. The bathrooms seem extremely nice here with glass shower doors and upgraded vanities. And the kitchen of this home is beautiful as well. Definitely has been recently updated. This bathroom in particular here is extremely well done. You have a chandelier as well as a standalone bathtub and a two-person shower area. And this house even has its own movie theater. The outdoor patio area is extremely spacious and it also has this separate tiki bar area. This is going to show a few more photos here of the lot. It's definitely a very impressive lot. However, one detail here that definitely caught my attention is the second story French doors that lead to nowhere. I'm not sure if they planned on adding a deck on the flat roof or what, but this is really weird. Here's the view from the inside of the house looking out through the second story doors to nowhere. If anyone has any idea idea what that could be for, leave us a comment below. Now most people would probably expect a gem like this to sell for quite a bit north of 1 million, especially given the upgrades throughout the property. If we take a look at the price history, this property was first listed in March of 2023 for 1.445 million. From there, you have a series of price cuts that bring it down to 1.25 million by July of 2023 or four months later. After it didn't sell, they took the listing down at the 
end of July and relisted it the following month at a new price of 1.295 million. For the rest of 2023, there were five more price cuts, bringing the listing down to 1.14 million in December of 2023. This house eventually sold at the end of February for a price of just 975,000. Despite the lot size and upgrades, the house couldn't break the $1 million ceiling. Had they listed this in 2022, they probably could have gotten well above $1 million for it, but this listing ended up selling for 32.5% less than the original list price in 2023. While it may have been overpriced to some degree, the market sentiment has clearly shifted in a major way. Nobody's remotely overpaying for properties now. Instead, they're looking for a significant deal. Lastly, we're going to finish up with two listings in Northport, starting with this one right here. This is a massive six bedroom, six and a half bathroom, 4,100 square foot house that has a very modern style and was built recently in 2019. It also mentions this is in a gated community, which is something that a lot of people are looking for. As far as the exterior goes, it has a very modern appearance. Looking at the interior of the home, this has definitely been remodeled recently with high end finishes and it has a great open floor plan. The kitchen is also extremely nice, but I'm not a huge fan of this window that's looking out into your screened pool area, but I guess it would help you to keep an eye on the grill. You have California closets in the bedroom closets, which is definitely a desirable feature in a higher end home. As far as the paint goes, I'm not a huge fan as it's definitely a little bit on the darker side, especially if you take a look at this room in particular with this red wall paint. But again, paint is easy enough for someone to go in and change. As far as the pool area goes, this is a great space with tons of room for outdoor entertainment. And you also have an outdoor bar area. Looking more closely, this is actually a full-blown outdoor kitchen, although it looks like they were supposed to install some type of vent hood or something above the stove stove, judging by the wiring that's sticking out. Taking a look at the price history, this house sold at the end of March of 2023 for $1,005,000. And it's interesting because the house was listed for $899,000 just five weeks prior. So this listing clearly had a lot of interest from buyers and possibly went into a bidding war. But here's where things get strange. The buyers relisted the home for sale in January of 2024, only nine months after buying it at a list price price of just under 1.1 million. At that price, they were definitely looking to break even on the place by recouping their transaction costs, but it didn't happen. The price was cut twice, leading to a list price of 1,050,000 in February of this year. But the crazy part is what this house eventually sold for, which was 900,000, nearly the exact same price it was listed at before the bidding war in 2023. While this isn't necessarily a price crash, it's a perfect example of how people People were overpaying for properties at one point, but definitely are not doing so today. It's also remarkable how quickly people change their minds and relist their homes for sale. This unfortunate homeowner lost $105,000 on the price difference and probably paid another $50,000 at least in commissions and closing costs. That means in just nine months, they lost about $155,000, which is a substantial amount in such a short period of time. And this brings us to our second listing in Northport which is also our final listing. Now guys, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please make sure you drop a like and subscribe, as well as let me know in the comment section if you want me to check out other housing markets across the country. This property in particular is a three bedroom, two bathroom townhouse in an HOA. So it does come with the benefit of maintenance free living, but the downside of those HOA fees. Overall, it's a bit dated inside, but the place does have very high ceilings, which is definitely a plus. You could probably take these walls out and make it more of an open concept if you wanted to improve the layout. As far as the bedrooms and the bathrooms go, there's really nothing to speak of here. It's definitely all original without any upgrades, and this was built in 1999. However, if you take a look at the outside photos, the tarps on the roof are definitely a deterrent for potential buyers. Although the listing does mention that the roofs are being replaced and are the responsibility of the association. If we take a look at the estimated price, price history, it peaked in July of 2023 with a price range of $325,000 to $340,000. It was listed for $309,000 towards the end of July of last year, which seemed like a reasonable price, but just wait until you see what happened. A little over three months later, the price was cut by $19,000, followed by an aggressive 
$1,000 price cut three months after that. This house eventually sold for just $240,000 in March of this year. Not only did it take almost eight months to sell, they had to cut the price by 22.4%. This is definitely a stark contrast from a few years ago when houses were selling within a week and buyers were overpaying left and right. For those looking to sell their homes quickly, the price needs to be extremely favorable for the buyer at this point in time. While some wouldn't quite call this a crash yet, if the trend continues and more inventory comes online, all it takes is enough panic sellers taking rock bottom offers for the entire local market to be affected. But let me know what you think about this in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for future updates on the Florida housing market. Thanks for tuning in. You can click below to watch my video looking at Port Charlotte, which is in the same area as these listings, and I'll see you there.